Hello everyone, my name is Artisil, and today I have some new gameplay for you guys. Some new gameplay footage, this was played against my good friend Santa, thanks to him for playing this game, and we're going to be getting right into it. The immortal we're playing is Zol, Prophet of the Hunt, and she's a relatively new immortal for the Aru faction, and what she does is exactly what it sounds like. She hunts down her opponents, and so she has a couple different ways of doing this. So, first thing is her abilities. She has two abilities that are unique to her. The first one of them is Mark Prey, and it does kind of two things. It's kind of first thing it does is it marks your opponent's units for with a debuff that means that you can see them for about 25 seconds. And if they stand in the ring that you target for too long, then they will be marked. And that means that they will take 50% extra damage. And when you kill units, they will give you extra pyre. And that is a lot of extra damage. That means that what you can do is you can say if the opponent has absolvers or is, entren is entrenched in a position, you can drop it on that position. You can not only mark their army so you can see it, but you can make them leave or move because otherwise their army is going to just explode. The other ability that she has is, a, is called the Great Hunt. And it's really, really cool. It doesn't have a visual effect right now for the person using it. But it restricts the enemy vision to 300. Which is like nothing. You like cannot see almost anything. Your opponent cannot see anything. And that lets you do some really interesting things. For one thing, they won't know where to fire their spells. Another thing, they won't know where your units are. They, you can slip by static defense or walls or anything like that. You can just walk right by them, which is super cool. And so we're going to start seeing, we're going to see some of that. So then she also has two vanguards, first of which is the Bone Stalker, which we're going to see at some point during this game. And the other one is the Whitewood Reaper. And the Bone Stalker is really interesting because... What it can do is after standing still, it's kind of like a marine where after standing still, it goes hidden, basically invisible. Your opponent can't see it. And then they can move around for about 10 seconds, completely invisible with a speed bone, with a speed bonus. And you can pop out in order to like ambush your opponent. Whitewood Reaper has a skill shot that you can use in order to essentially mark a particular unit as, um, how do I put it? You can use it to mark a unit in a small AoE with a debuff that gives 100% damage increase to that particular unit. And it also gives the Rightwood Reaper permacloak. So, there's kind of two different kinds of hidden. So, you have regular hidden, which means if you get close enough to an enemy unit, you will be able to see it. And then you have hidden with a decloak range of zero, which is permacloak, which you can... It's kind of... It's, it's the typical way you might think about invisibility. That's really cool. So, let's look at this game right now. We have... A pile of Zakals. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and put ourselves in a position where we can do a lot of multi prong and be really, really annoying to the opponent here. So, what we can do, we just like walk in and we can start trading with the Zakal. Unfortunately, this is the Zentari that we see right here are on hallowed ground, or at least were on hall hallowed ground, which was that blue ring you saw just a little bit ago. And that means that they get range. When they're standing on hallowed ground, we can't really do anything to them, specifically. Because they have 300 range, and that means that they're able to, like, kind of poke in and out. And they hit really freaking hard. It's like a melee unit gets range. Melee unit with melee unit stats gets range. Imagine giving zealots a range attack, if you know StarCraft. It's pretty brutal. You can see we're breaking down these rocks right here. See the hallowed ground, and 
We can snipe one Magi. Magi are a unit that gives hallowed ground when they are deployed and heals things. So now you can see we're kind of like looking to do some multi-prong, be really, really annoying here. And what I'm hoping is hap going to happen is he's going to walk down there into his, his, down into his natural, and then we send the other set of Zakal up into his main, and we poke in and out repeatedly over and over and over again in order to try and get some damage done, take some efficient trades. And while we do this, we can actually expand behind this such that we're on three bases and he's on two bases and we can start getting an economic lead. So you can see we have some Zakals outside the natural, we have some going down the ramp there. That means that he's kind of got to defend like multiple places at once here. So we can run these over here, run these up into his main base, see if we can snipe an ether extractor, and then heck, we can snipe his production buildings because the calls are a silly unit that <laughs> do an absolutely disgusting amount of building damage. I guess it's damage versus heavy, but it's fantastic that way. So you can see here that we are building thrums. That's what that like dev art looking uh, looking production building is building right there. It is building thrums, and thrums are a fun unit that is like. Think about how annoying a mutilisk is. Oh, no. Buzzes around your head and kills your workers. And that's basically what we're going to do with the thrums. And we can also use them when we're calling up harassment. These dervish right here are going to get cleaned up by the thrums. And so, therefore, they give us map vision as well. So, therefore, we build about 10 of them. And we'd be really annoying with them. We kill workers. You can see here, we have a third base going up already. It's just about done. You can see right there. And our opponent hasn't even started their own third base because they've been so busy dealing with our harass. So what do you do? Well, that means that the goal here is to survive, essentially. Because all that money that he didn't invest into a third base has to be going somewhere, right? We look at that, those, those are calls in the dervish kind of spazzing out right there. It's kind of funny. So, what are we going to do? We're going to build a bone canopy, a second bone canopy, and we're going to build a deep nest. Now, the deep nest gives us access to a unit called the behemoth. And the behemoth is big flying sky noodle wonderful big flying sky noodle that's a bit like a mix of a swarm host from starcraft mixed with a um brood lord with very low range so we're going to be seeing some of these so now he's walking across the map here and notice in his army so zentari are really beefy but here's the thing, they don't shoot up. He only has three Magi, and he has three Zephyrs, which don't shoot up. This means that if he attacks, then we're going to be able to snipe his anti-air units, and then we'll be able to kill the rest of his army with our Thrums. So we have some workers here, we can send them over back, that, to, back to the base. You can see there's Zol's Vanguard unit the bone stalker right there and so they need an upgrade in order to be able to stabilize and it looks like that we are going to be attacked here so like we were talking about earlier what can we do well we can snipe the zephyrs we can snipe the magi and then the entire rest of his force isn't going to be able to oh looks like we have a mark for prey that's making him leave his pillar of the heavens right here and our behemoths are shooting little keetles at him. And keetles are a bit like locusts, and they have a short range attack, but they don't do nearly as much damage. So they're more of like a meat shield. So what are we? What else are we doing here? We are zoning the rest of the zephyrs that are trying to reinforce the army with our zakals, so that that way we can finish murdering his army with these thrums and behemoths. So he will get the base. But we took a very cost-efficient trade here because we didn't lose very many units compared to what he lost. And because we just wiped his army, you can use the old, uh, you can use that old thing where you can use that old idea. 
where if you wipe an army, you can take bases, right? Take a good trade, put yourself further ahead because he's not going to be able to attack you nearly as well. So we can take some more bases. We can retake our natural now. And very likely, because of the fact that he was on two base, we may just be able to A move him here and see if we can just finish the game. So we walk in we go, okay. Looks like he has a third base now. We can snipe a couple of workers. Be really annoying with these thumbs. You can kind of see just how annoying these can get. And so now that our behemoths are here, we can walk in and right there, we just used Zul's ultimate, which reduces their vision by three. And you can see his Zephyrs have to get really close up in order to be able to shoot Mizek Halls right here. This is because he just can't see them. Wish I had a visual effect to show you guys, but just, it's pre-alpha. What do you expect? So it's pre-alpha footage up in the corner. And so with this big Zol ultimate and picking off the rest of his units and killing his third base because of the fact we're so far ahead, that is GG. And so I hope you enjoyed some of the Zul gameplay and seeing the abilities and the effects that they have. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments or if you like this video or whatever. I love talking to you guys, answering questions, etc. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Have a good day.